Welcome back, everybody, to Railbirds TV. This is the 2024 Derby City Classic. We are in the one pocket division. They're going to lag for the break. It's alternate break. Each opponent has a designated pocket. The first to make eight of any balls wins the game. Any foul will cost you a ball. Three foul rule is in effect. And like I said, it is alternate break. As you see on your screen, you're probably familiar with the lion, Alex Paggy Lion. Although you might not be too familiar with Pius Labudis. And as I am not most familiar, what I do know is that he shoots straight, very straight. And I look for this to be a good match. And here is why. This day and age, in my opinion, and I know most of the old school one pocket players' opinions, like the Jeremy Joneses and even the Alex Paggy Lions of our era, we all firmly believe this has gone to a shooter's a shooter's game. Eight and out is the best move. That being said, let's see how this goes. Peggy Lyon to break. I am your host, if you haven't figured it out, Scott Frost, a.k.a. The Freezer. And Alex will have the lower right corner. This year... They are playing on four and a half inch pockets. That does favor the shooter, in my opinion. That could be debated. We could talk about that at another time. But for now, as we see on our screen, Labutis pretty cut off from the low and high balls. The six is a big problem. The five is a problem. The two and seven is not on. Why I mention that is there's always an option to take a foul up in the top right corner of the table. I will bet money he does not do that because he's not familiar with this game. I do know in talking to him at this event, he has not played much, if any, one pocket. So immediately, I do see that he could probably roll forward on the 13, maybe knock the six out. Just keep the cue ball down on the bottom rail. It's a pretty safe so shot, but it's just biding time. If he'd like to do something more powerful, it's possible that the carom off the 9 into the 13 into the corner is available. It's a, play a shot that a lot of these players will shoot when their backs are against the wall. Including myself, it's just got to be laying right. looking to get the cue ball there and if he can achieve that he's doing great things and that is a very tall order coming off of the black eight this is extremely difficult yeah and this is the problem there's so much room for error in that shot because you're coming off the rail and you've got to judge the speed. Did he get away with it? I think Paggy Lyon can dice this in. Watch the right middle. Watch the left middle. know that he wanted to catch that point obviously he wasn't playing to catch it but I don't think it benefited him he's going to have to play the three and he's going to have to put a little power behind it get over for the 11 like to stay below the 11 here oh, he played it real for way too thick What I mean by that is he shot it further down on the rail than he should have. He should have caught it a little higher on the rail. Cue ball has time to react to the bottom and then the side rail. But now, he's going to have to put him between the seven and four. If he can. 
Alex knows that that mistake alone could prove disastrous against a player like Labutis. Looking to clip off of this 11 possibly, or he's looking to make sure that the 13 isn't wired or that the 10 isn't wired. Yeah, he's going to come back to the bottom, just like so. take his time here. I, I, I did watch him play a little bit in his first round. I just happened to have the opportunity. He does survey everything. I think at this moment, he not in this particular moment, but I think in this moment in time with the game, he just hasn't played enough of it. Playing a player like Paggy Lyon, he really wants to make sure that what he's doing is to the best of his ability and that the shot selection is as good as it can get. That was laying real nice to shoot. Ended up in a pretty good spot. play the passive shot and just go forward on the 11 and kind of bring him below the 7. These top one pocket players are used to this type of shot. Scratch is not really in play. He could go rail first on the 7, bringing it back over to his side. He'd be risking a scratch in the top left, maybe selling the 8 out. So I don't know that that's the option right now. He's entertaining the blue two as well. I think this is probably the safest play for now. Uh, he didn't get that cue ball down. Buse is going to cut this seven, I believe. At worst, he can spin it in. to me like he's using a flat ball here. He's going to try and go two rails into the pile. Well, he's got a backdoor position shot here. I believe he can cut the 13. I believe he's ended up perfect. He might even be able to nudge the 10 open here. looking at the angle now. Obviously speed will dictate how much you open those up. If he'd like to punch it a little bit, he's going to get a pretty good spread. Position not guaranteed. Let's see how he plays it. Yeah, position not guaranteed. If you hit it with speed, you've got to know where it's going. So he had to draw into those balls a little bit more in order to hold the cue ball on the right end of the table. What does the nine look like? I believe it's going low. Yeah, I believe it's going low. He's got plenty of options here. Just going to come off the two. Yeah, nicely done. Nicely done. Would have liked to have kept the two over to the left a little bit more. I think it poses more risk for Pagulain if it's to the left versus towards the center the way it is now. But he's done just fine. Both players playing for six.
Alex Pagulayan, a master at shooting the right shot, in my opinion, one of the best out there playing percentages. And that's what one pocket is all about. And a little flinchy there. He wasn't totally comfortable with that due to the position of the one. Pius might be able to bank the one into the 15. Might be able to bank it clean. He's looking to leave the cue ball up there by his cue. Should be the top right corner. It's a little dangerous though due to the position of these balls. Has the nine been moved? The nine has been moved on that shot. Does it throw down to Pius's pocket? I don't believe he sees it. It looks to me like it's close. Oh, I like the decision. He wasn't worried about the 15. He went ahead and shot the one above it, keeping it a major threat for Pagulain. The other problem I see here is that if Pagulain decided to shoot the 15, which he won't, nothing else goes in his pocket. So these balls definitely favor Labudas. Now he's got to protect against the 15. Well, I wouldn't be shocked if Labudas banks at this 11. If the 4 is thick enough, he will bank it. If he can see enough of the 4, he'll bank it below the 15 and put it back up. But if he can't get the 4 close to his pocket... Kind of open things up for Pagulain, and he can shoot at the 15. So you've got to be very careful. And that's what he's considering. So in order to shoot this, you've got to get it close to your pocket, at least over it. Yeah, Pagulain's going to shoot the 15 here. I think he's forced to shoot the 15. And this is what I was speaking of. If you can't see enough of the four, don't trap yourself. And you have. This isn't easy by any means. I think you've got to shoot it. If there was an area of Alex's game this day and age, I would say it's probably distance. I know the Paggy Lion of 10 years ago would have rifled the 15 in already. I'm a little bit surprised that he's shooting this too. I can't fault him. Like I said, he shoots the right shot. Most of the time, more than most. But that was pretty passive and kind of telling, right? That'll tell your opponent, hmm, this guy either really respects me, or he doesn't have a lot of confidence right now. You know, I'm just calling this out there. If I could get this straight on view. I think that the two railer on the eight is actually available. You can swing the cue ball two rails 
to the right of the 15. It's real aggressive. It's just an option. You can also consider banking the one and going into the eight. He could just chip off of the two and bring him down here low in the low right. He could come off the eight softly. Okay, he shot my shot. How did he hit it? This is the danger of Pius Labutus. His execution is at the highest level. And you don't have to know the game real well if you can execute as good as him. And we've seen that with the likes of Fedor Gorst, Joshua Filler. These guys have come on the scene and played no one pocket at all when they first arrived, and they were all a threat. And now, they're all winning. Wow. Nice control there. Very, very important to get above that too so he could come back for the 15. A lot of players wouldn't have taken that chance. They're afraid they're going to get snookered by the pile or the 15. So they would have just taken the cut. Playing for four. He would have liked to have stayed below that. He's going to probably play the 5-10 next. get up. Yeah, he's not in love with it. I don't think it's terrible though. He can rub the 12 loose here. It's a little bit below the 5. Yeah, and he has rubbed the 12 loose. Playing for 1. And he's having fun. Labutus with a pretty quick one to nothing lead. And I guarantee you, he's got Paggy Lyons' attention. I want to thank these stream sponsors, Bad Boys Billiard Productions, Hustling USA, JB Custom Cases, Jerry Olivier Custom Cues, Litman Lights, and locked and loaded custom billiard apparel. Thank you guys so much for your support. Pretty big game there, right? Paggy Lyon won the lag. And Labutus cracks his break. Now to me, it looks like the 6 is a bit high. It just doesn't look like the 14 is straight with that diamond or centered. And that would be against Labutus' favor breaking from this side of the table. Let's see what happens with the cue ball. Well, he's done just fine. Big problems for Paggy Line. The 15 high, 7 low. Coverage everywhere. And note the shot that I was talking about last game. At worst, you've always got the option of going into the lower left corner. That isn't going to do it, in my opinion. I feel like he needed to get something close to his side. I know he's not going to be thrilled with it. It's not terrible, but he's opened a lot more up for Labutus. This could be where not knowing the game rears its ugly head. Can you pinch the 9 over on top of the 12 and just stick him to the 4? Or does the 2 have him snookered? It's a good angle there. The 2 does not have him snookered. So can you twist the 9 up? And even if it misses the 12, can you stick him in there like on the 1 and 4? And that's what he's looking at now. 
that's what jumped up at me right away. Do want to be careful that the 286 isn't wired to Paggy Line's pocket. If it is, then you've probably got to come off the two. But if you come off the two, you really need to protect this 15 ball. It's almost worth taking a foul. Yeah, I don't know that that's going to work. You're better off to take a foul. The balls are in your favor. You can pack your line and see enough of the 15. If he can, then that's a big sign of inexperience there. Yeah, I think he can. He's going to swerve into it at least. Yeah. Big, big sign of an experience there. Great shot by Paggy Lyon. He obviously didn't play to make it, but it was a bonus. And Labutus, looking back, I don't know that a foul ever crossed his mind, but he had everything in his position. And this is a game of millimeters. Tells me that he doesn't like cutting the three here. He'd rather bank the 12. He better be confident in making it because he can cut the three. Well, it's the lion, Alex Paggy Lion. Now he can draw back off the 1. The 14 does play if he stays above it. He can get to the 9 at worst. Punched into the top of those. Now he's going to be reaching. Thought he would draw back a little bit there, but he's at the table. There's clearly a reason I'm in the booth. And I think that's what he just looked at. Maybe he kind of wishes he drew back as well because you would have still gotten a shot on the six, but you might have fallen good on the 14. Neither here nor there. Did he get lucky? Can he throw the 14 in? Eh, I don't know. It's pretty steep. Yeah, so I feel like he made a little bit of an error not drawing that ball back previous. And the last thing you want to do with a ball lead is give the guy he's playing a look at anything. So you better play nice and snug here. He's going to play the two railer on the 11 and his thought process here is just get it close. If you make it, it's a bonus. Ball speed is all too important. Doesn't want to hit the eight, but it's ended up okay. Would have liked to have got that ball past the eight because the two eight were doubled up. Now the two and 11 are doubled up. But if you're Puce, cannot be mad. Doesn't have much aggressive here that I see. He could chip the nine. But he'd have to protect against banking the 8. I believe Alex can bank the 8 below the 14. Looks like he can't. But I think he can. So you could chip off the 9 and leave him over here where the tip is now. Is he looking to cross the 11 with the two and go forward.
Yeah, that's what he's done. And he's done it perfectly. Wow. Not easy to do from that distance. Paggy Lion doesn't like the taste of that. The 11 is a very, very big ball for the Buddhists right now. Paggy Lion is going to run and hide. He's going to bank the 4 up towards the 13 and bring the cue ball back behind the 11. Likes to leave him flat on that nine, so Labudas can't do much with it. He didn't want the four to go in the right middle, but it did. It always seems like whenever we don't want that ball to go, we make it, right? It never fails. Would have liked to have had that ball over there for protection in the future. Notice the top right side of the table. If he can get the cue ball up there somewhere, there's a lot to be worried about if you're Paggy Lion. Can you one rail the 10 and bring the cue ball between the five and two? Just get it over to the right side of the table. You're not trying to make the 10. You're actually using the 10 to get the cue ball where you want. So far, though, for a guy that's promoted playing no one pocket, his head definitely seems to be shaped correctly. I mean, really seems to be shaped correctly. I have not seen that I know of any bad shot selections except for when he could have possibly taken a foul early in this game. And we all make those mistakes from time to time. <laughs> Paggy Lyon looking to come off the four. Bring him back down below the eight and eleven. Potentially move a couple balls. Or is he looking to bank the two and swing the cue ball? Boy, I feel like that's a little risky. Due to the fact that the eight eleven carom is available. So he needs to execute this real well. With a 4-0 ball lead, I feel like this is very risky. I don't think he'll end up shooting it. And Alex will do this at times. He'll get down on a ball multiple times, and he's just feeling it out, right? Just feeling it out, and all the while, don't think that he's not doing numbers. He is doing numbers. He's got a four to nothing ball lead here. You can come off the four and get below the 11 8 easily. That's what he's going to do. I've often wondered if it's a tactical part of Paggy Lion's game when he does that, but I've figured out after playing with him for the better part of 25 years that that's just his style he's really weighing out his options tends to pump fake quite a bit he's come up a bit short there pretty sure Labutus can see this nine and that's going to be a problem he can shorten this up with a bit of inside he'd like to get the cue ball just past the side pocket probably up to the third diamond actually on the left side it's pretty good right there like to have made it obviously soft kick to the nine just missing the one. That's how tight that was. Really nice touch. Yeah, and this is a good look at the potential for Labudas. And I don't know 
He'd like to get back over there behind the one. Can he come off the five? Kind of like banking the five towards where it's at now. Really just playing all cue ball. Over to the middle right diamond on the top right end of the table. I don't think I moved the four here. I think that's good protection. And it's working for you. Really don't want to move your soldier in the middle of battle. Can you come off the 11 and put them up there? But the 11 is covering the 9, so I feel like it's working for you as well. So he's looking at the 11-8 bank. Like you're going to lose the cue ball a little bit there. This is tough. Yeah, really tough to control the cue ball there. Trying to do so much. Did he get away with it slightly? He has gotten away with it slightly, and the reason I say that is the five doesn't pass the four. He can shoot the four, possibly. I don't even know if he can shoot the four, but even if he does, he's got potential to sell out unless he elevates and punches over behind the nine. He's going to play the five into the four. Play all cue ball here. Cue ball in behind the nine. Oh, he didn't even go into the four. This is even better. It's pretty darn good right there. Pagulain. Currently, in my opinion, the best in the world at the cue ball. Playing this game. Tough to execute here. Where's the four going to go? Where's the four going to go? Well, let's put that one on the highlight reel. Hagen line looking to see if he can chop the five. He's going to go against his better judgment. Looking to two-rail the four and go into the nine might be asking a bit much. You can make the nine. I think that you need to just go with the nine here. Even if you want to get a little frisky, maybe try and cinch him to the bottom of the eight. Yeah, that's what he's tried to do. Whoa. A little dipsy do in the table there. Might have caught something. shocked if Labuda's two rails at this four, but the problem is I don't know where the cue ball is going to go. He's going to have to hit it with pace to stun it over below the five because it's not natural. And he knows it. You're only down four balls to one. You've won the first game. This is where experience is huge at the highest level. It's no time to panic. The balls are still yeah, pretty evenly favored. Although the 5 is there for Paggy Lion. Budas has the 10 and the 13, the 8, the 4. They're pretty evenly favored. What can he do here? Can't tell how much he's got of the 11. If he could swerve and just catch the bottom of the 11 and just kind of open those balls up and leave Peggy Lion parallel and flat on the 8, that's okay. But you don't have to be aggressive here. But this is also the danger of these young rotation players, especially on forgiving pockets. 
they don't know they can miss. Yeah, so I feel like he can at least see all of the 11. Maybe not the bottom end of it, but he probably hit the heavy side of that ball. And if that's the case... It's not terrible. It's really not terrible. The 8 did come up to where Pagaline's going to manufacture something most likely into the 14 controlled. But... I didn't hate the shot that he shot. The only issue Paggy Lyon has here is that he doesn't really have much to protect against the five now. Yes, he's got a good bank at the eight into the 14, but he knows that he's got to be extremely careful not to leave a return bank on the 11 or five. So whatever he does here will be highly controlled. Could play the 8-2 rails into the 14. Could play it direct. I like two rails into the 14. Because you might be able to slide the cue ball up towards the 10 a little bit more. But he's pretty steep on it. Kicking, or is he going forward into the eight? Forward. Interesting. Oof. He was really gambling there. Tried to butter him up right to the back of the seven and four. Mabutus definitely has a kick behind the one, or the five, excuse me. Peggy Lyon's gotten a little fortunate that the 11 tied up. It's not a big future for the 5 to get by those balls. with it. He had to spin it quite a bit. Now, I wouldn't be shocked if he ended up banking the blue too. If it's natural, he could swing the cue ball all the way around. at the five. Pretty clever. Pretty clever. Even better. I think that's even better. Yeah, maybe not. He might have felt like he could cut the 11. But he used the 11 and 14 to his advantage. He knew if he caught the top side of the five, even if he didn't make it, it was going to be close. Very clever shot. We should all learn something from the shot Paddy Lyon had just shot. You have a lot of room for error using that second rail, like Paddy Lyon did. You have a lot of room for error. You can hit it kind of poorly and still get away with it. Whereas if you try to hit a fine spot on the object ball one rail, a lot can go wrong. This is what the Lion is very good at. Containing his lead, containing his opponent, containing his position. like these, 
one's experience is lacking that you can start to and I don't want to use the term go crazy but you can start to doubt or second guess and what will typically end up happening in those scenarios is you're just looking for the first aggressive option because some sort of a slight panic can go through the mind happens to all of us even when you have experience obviously I'm not saying in that scenario he didn't have anything aggressive what I'm saying is in the next few innings it'll be interesting to see how Labutus's brain actually functions playing the game so far I'm highly impressed making him work for it. Very simple but effective. Basically forcing the Buddhas to come off of the bottom of the 11 or send the 11 to his side and bring the cue ball down. Concern is that you don't want to leave him the blue two, meaning Paggy Lyman. Now he's looking up table, and this is what I was talking about a little bit ago. It'd be nice to see how his brain functions in this position. I hope he's not doing what I think. Interesting. That is a very unconventional one pocket shot. He ran the cue ball about 11 feet to move a ball where he could have just come off of one. So there's a lot of risk involved there. And I'm not picking on him. I'm just pointing it out to all of you at home that that's a sign of an experience, whether it worked out or not. For Senator to say over time, a shot like he just shot could go wrong more often than just coming off the bottom of the 11 or sending the 11 to your side and keep the cue ball over there below the 8. Yeah, and this is a really good hit. Wow, what a good hit that was. So a little bit of an inexperienced shot, that last shot from Labutus, for sure. Uh, you just don't see shots like that when you've got an object ball much closer to the cue ball that you could have moved. It would be interesting to see his mindset going forward. Here you've got to be ultra careful. Because of the pocket size, it's going to be tough to dig out. It's a pretty good hit from where he was. Really nice control. Yeah. Derby City Classic. Full of talent. Josh Roberts, on the right of your screen, was just shooting. Now, Paggy Lyon, is he entertaining twisting the 11 back past the 1 and the 8? He doesn't really want to move the 11, right? But really, what else does he have? He's considering 3-railing this 8. Does he go with the cue ball up there towards the one? Remember now, Haggy Lyon has a five to one ball lead. Anything 
that's a pretty good view we have there. Yeah, he's, he's, he's got to be concerned about where he's going to leave this cue ball. He knows the man he's playing can make just about anything he shoots at. He's pretending or acting as if he can get the cue ball up there, so the angle must be fooling me, unless he's going to shoot something different. Okay, here he goes again with the pump fake. Back to the 11. And that's kind of what I was discussing earlier. You've got to wonder sometimes if he knows what he's going to shoot to begin with. But then you think about it, and his mind just works in numbers, and he's narrowing down the percentages. And that's what makes him so great. this point in time, the Buddhist is looking for some anesthesia or maybe an Advil. Because I guarantee you, he does not know this part of the game and what tends to happen to players that don't play one pocket or that do not play one pocket is that they tend to overthink in the up table game. If I can give you any advice, and I don't know that I am the one to do that, it would be to keep it simple. Do not overthink it. If something jumps right out at you, especially if it's passive, do it. Don't talk yourself out of an inning. Like here. There's nothing wrong with just nudging the 7 up past the 14, slipping the cue ball right in there between that 14 ball and the rail, or the 10 and the rail, whichever ball that is, to the left side. Just nudge him behind that ball, come off the 7. It's okay, it's passive, you know you're not going to win the game with it, but it gets you through the inning. And any time you get through an inning, you give your opponent an opportunity to make an error. ball. This is fine. Nothing wrong with it. I believe, though, that the seven does go if Baggy Lion were to entertain the two, so I think he's going to remove those now. Probably going to make the ten. He's aware of that, because he'd have to cut the seven on the low end, sending it up table. You don't want to shoot into the face of it. You're going to scatter too many balls. And you'd have to hit it too hard to draw your cue ball back down to the bottom rail. Okay, he's just going to nudge it. Keep the cue ball right there behind it. That was similar to the shot that I was speaking of for Labutus in the prior shot. doesn't like the fact that the 10 is probably covered by the 7 now. Can't quite tell if it goes. It's close, but I don't think it does. And this is going to give Paggy Lion a free roll at the blue 2. Well, he's overcut this by some margin. I did touch on it prior. Distance, if anything, has hurt Paggy Lyon's game. It's the distance at times. We are only in the second round. Neither player with a loss. this ball. 
here I think you've got to commit. Really give it your all to make it instead of worry about the cue ball. And notice his cue tip was telling me he was trying to get the cue ball below the four. When you split your focus like that, you're obviously lessening your chance to execute the shot. It's the tricky part of this game. Going to the eight here, just soft draw towards the bottom of the eight. Get this ball close. Yeah, this is a problem, Pius. He might be forced to cut the 13 if it passes the 10. It's hard to tell. You wouldn't think that ball goes. But from here, it looks like it's got a prayer. And I don't think it does. Can you play the 13 off the 4? And draw it back on top of the 8, leaving Paggy Lion elevated at worst, or at best, if you're Lavutus. some type of snooker on the eight. That'd be clever. It's not terrible. The biggest problem is that the 10 doesn't go. So really, any battle down here with the eight, you're probably going to lose. Can you play the 13 off the four and go forward? of this, I would bet Paggy Line can rail first to the eight if he'd like. Really put Lamutus in jail. That's what he's looked at. I don't know if reaching it to you know, that's what he's gonna do. Well, here we go. He said he did. Looked to me like it rocked back, but it must be close. I'm obviously a lot further away. The Buddha's going to nudge the eight as well. So he called a foul on himself. Interesting. Now he's up close watching this. I don't know that Pagulon got a rail that first time, but he's at the shot, so you've got to believe that he knows best. And this is kind of what I was touching on earlier. Any battle with the eight... The Buddhist is going to get the worst of due to the positioning of the balls. If the 10 went, it's a little different story. The Buddhist wants Paggy Lion to watch the shot. He's still going to get the worst of this because now Alex can ticky behind it and work his way all the way up the rail if he has to. Like so. I thought he would have hit it a little softer, though. This could give Labutus an opportunity to shoot the 8 into the 14 and maybe draw 
below the 13. Might even be able to bank the 13 to your side, just below the 7, and draw behind the 8. Bring the 13 to make it. You're just elevating, bringing the cue ball back behind the 8. I didn't think Paggy Lion would give him this much room to work with. Makes a difference. Being up against the ball or having two inches can possibly be between winning and losing. He's got more like three or four inches between them. And now he's looking at the shot I described. At least he's got an opportunity to possibly get out of this nightmare. Try to bank the eight, or excuse me, shoot the eight into the top side of the 14 and just pinch draw the cue ball back behind the 11. Sounds easy, right? Well, let's see what happens. Could even shoot the eight towards the two and pinch draw below the 13. You don't have to move the 10 or the 14 right now. Oh, and he's miscued. This is going to be damaging. Paggy Line playing for three. Took a look over there at Labutus. I can promise you there was a reason he was taking a look. He's getting a read on his player's emotions. Doesn't want to run into this. Making life difficult on himself. Or at least this game. Surprised he didn't spin that with a little right English. Make sure you come to the left long rail. Does the nine bank pass the two? If not, I think he's just got to chip to the bottom of the nine and bring him below the two. Can't bank the two. I believe the kiss is available. Is he looking to bank this to the back of the two? I feel like that's dangerous. Really all he could do in that position. The Buddha should go immediately to the eight and double pack and line up on the nine and two. Should get the cue ball up there. Somewhere around where the one is to the right side of it. Nice, very well done. But look at the one. Will Paggy Lion use the 10 and 7 to his advantage again? He could play the one and draw over below the 13. He's going to bring the 11 to his side and come below the two. Very nice. You can go rail first here, though, on the seven. You're going to do two things at once. You probably move the seven out or make it. You're going to gamble a little bit losing the cue ball. But at least going rail first, your cue ball is going to go to the top right side of the table, maybe towards the one. 
you've got to move those balls to win this game anyway. I like rail first. Yeah. Yeah, the only thing I didn't like about that, it turned out just fine. But the seven isn't makeable. That's the ball you needed to move. That's not going to threaten Paggy Lyon at all. If he would have gone rail first on the seven, you had to gamble a little bit there. You were worried about scratching, but I think it was time. I believe he's just going forward on this. He might be cutting it. Okay, the cue ball laid correctly to come down two rails. Well, now you have to be aggressive. Trailing six balls to one. Excuse me, 6-0. to zero. Labutus took a foul earlier. Didn't get a rail on the 8. He's going to bank at the 10. Do not want to catch the 13. He's hit it pretty good. All things considered, he's hit it quite well. Peggy Lyon, not out of the woods yet. Does the angle lay correctly to shoot the two into the back of the ten and sweep? Kind of like draw or punch the cue ball kind of towards the eight. Or does the angle tell us that he can just bank the ten up towards the seven, kind of crossing the face of it with some right, not left, but right, outside English? Make the 10 towards the 13 with some right. He's going to play the 2 upwards and go into the back of the 10. Well, he had room to kick past the 2. It's even better. I'd still look at utilizing the 2 9 double up. Get that cue ball up there in the top right. Nothing wrong with two railing that one down past the eight, just down towards the center here of the bottom rail. Especially if that's the route to get the cue ball where you need it. Like banking the tens a little risky. Yeah, he's caught it thinner than he wanted. So now Paggy Lyons immediately able to go to the blue two and remove it if he'd like. He's going to take a look at the one feels good about it, he can cross it. Yeah, nicely hit. That's going to do it. Peggy Line playing for one. He's going to crack Labutus's break in game number two. thank these sponsors very much for their participation. These are the ones putting the tournament on. 
Diamond Billiard Products, Ian Simonis and Simonis Claw, Aramic Billiard Balls, Outsville AccuRack, AccuStats Video Production, and last but very not least, the long-lasting Masters Billiard Chalk. One game apiece, that was a big game, obviously, in a race to three, they're all big. Paggy Lion needs to lay down a good break here. Well, he has caught the fifth. He caught the 12 there, so he's caught the fifth ball. I was going to say the third ball, but I did see the cue ball go off the 12. He's going to owe one immediately. Good news for him. Nothing goes in Labutus' pocket. Looking to play the 15 off the right edge of the 6 and sweep everything to his side. The only concern I have there is that the 15 6 are a little flat or a little straight. The 15, if it was more on the line of where the 1 is, I would like it more because you could get a kiss on the 15-6 here low. I would consider doing the same thing with the one and punching down. Watch for a double kiss on this 15-6. Okay, he didn't get it. So he's all right. Yeah, I don't think he's going to love the end result here. He will be behind the 5 and 12. Now Laboot is faced with some issues. Immediately looking at the 1. When all else fails, shoot at your pocket. Problem is, Paggy Lion has that 13 looming. Even if he gets past it, meaning the Buddhas, he doesn't knock the one down. The bank is pretty easy. It's high enough for Paggy Lion. I would actually consider more so here banking the one with pocket speed and spinning the cue ball up table like this. You can control the one a lot better. You can at least make a threat of it. Oh, he's caught it too thick. Way too thick. Nice cue ball. Nice cue ball. Alex looking to play the 15 to the 6 and bring the cue ball down behind the 1. This is a really good looking shot if it lays right. Depending on how it lays, he'll play the 15 rail first or directly into the 6. Didn't lay as good as I thought. I thought it laid good enough for him to get the cue ball deep down behind the one. So Labutus has a clean look at the green six. He can play this two rails into the bottom of the 13. This is common amongst one pocket players. You want to play the six two rails to the bottom of the 13. Carries the motion on the six towards the lower right. And the one might even help it. You can do it several different ways. If you want to elevate, it's okay. He is. Just got to make contact with that 13. Oh, he's caught the top side of it. 
So I don't believe he played the shot I was discussing. I think he played this pretty nice as well. He's opened up a bunch on his side. If that cue ball gets another rotation towards the four, Paggy Lyons in big, big trouble. Wow, what a change of events that was. He's looking at taking a possible foul. One rail below the one. Might be looking at the nine, five, seven. Let's see what he's thinking. I believe he can shoot the 13 and go forward. Problem is, he doesn't want to catch the point with the 13. He could bank the 15 and gamble the game. I'd like to bet he doesn't shoot that. He knows he's favored after last game in the moving aspect of the game. So he doesn't want to give anything away. will work. He put his hand up. I felt like he immediately hit it with decent speed. Could say he's a little fortunate, but you'd be surprised at how many times these top players will end up like that. Bad news. Move the penny to the third diamond. I feel like he's only fouled twice. He scratched on the break. Well, Mabutis is also fouled there. Hmm. I apologize in advance. I could be mistaken on pagging lines. Okay, so Pagulain owes one, Labutus owes none. To quicken the matches up, if each player owes a ball, it's a wash. So if I owed three and my opponent fouls, I would then owe two. Hopefully that makes sense. But Alex has gone back to owing one, so he never did owe three. All is well, and he is looking to get this one real close to his pocket. Now, he played to sweep him. A little surprised. I thought he was really close to the ball and actually could play the one to his pocket. Can't fault him on his shot, <laughs> especially with the cue ball. thought he could do something similar to what he did there just by cheating the object ball and going into the one. He really has cut the options off for the young man. I don't think that's terrible. It's passive, but what can you do? Even if you've got to take a foul, you're on one, though. Boy, that needs to turn, and it has. Really nicely done. It's left Paggy line straight on the seven.
might be able to manufacture some type of cross go up into the 10 might be able to rail the 7 towards the 6 and draw into the 3 looking at the 15 this angle all camera angles can be misleading to, to us when they're at the table it's obviously the best view right so what I'm doing for you is trying to call out different options very tough to predict yeah I don't know that I like the 15 with this angle I don't feel like you, you can get the cue ball over I just don't feel like you're going to have much protection meaning that you're going to leave Labuda something real nice or at least a lot of room to operate yeah, I feel like here if he doesn't get something closer on his side oh well huh. that's pretty good if you know you're going to go into the top of the five from there Labudus gives him the tap of approval that's going to slow him down and if you really look at it the cue ball was placed quite well he's doubled up on the 6 he's doubled up on the 15 so if he didn't move the 5 let's look at what Lubutus would have had nothing great so that proved to be an excellent shot. I don't believe the three plays off the ten. I think it goes high. This doesn't look devastating, but it's pretty tricky. The six is low, the five is high. These are both terrible balls for Labutus. The one is also a problem. If you want to kick to the bottom side of the six, One moved the six moved the one, but the six took the place of the one, so now the six is a problem. What does he elect to do here? Does he want to draw into the one, or do you want to go forward into the ten? Can you miss the ten? I think he's got to go into something here. gotten away with it kind of in a lot of ways you could say Labutus has gotten away with it immediately here I feel like you've got to come off the one but he's considering the five off the seven or the three off the seven into the ten I don't know that it carries position, but it might be okay if you can keep him nudged up there behind the one. If you can catch the seven thin enough with the three. Yeah, the angle from here tells me you can't. But this angle tells me he might be able to bank the 13. Okay, he was glued. He's not thrilled with it, but he didn't really have anything. He was trying to protect the 10. Problem with that is you get too high and you leave the 13. So you're darned if you do, darned if you don't. Yeah, 
yeah, nicely done. Really nicely done. Laid well. Played the 10 off the bottom of the 6. All cue ball here. Good speed. 10 is a massive threat. I immediately see the one rail foul below the 10. Pagiline owes one. Labutis owes none. They will wash. And let's just start from scratch. Wow, so this is a sign to me that a little inexperience here. Whether he executes it or not, I think the percentages are down. He's going to try and come to the backside of the four here. Or maybe I am just too old. Because he acted like he knew what he was doing there. And he did quite well at it. That was not easy. The 14 was way out there in the middle of the table. He controlled the cue ball like it was on a string. Aggie Lyon can come off the 10 and put him behind the 14. Like you're banking the 10 up towards the 5. You don't want to tie the 5-10 up. But you can play the cue ball two rails tight in behind the 14. That's what a great player will do. They're not satisfied with just getting it below it. They want to glue him to it. That's what he's looking at now. He's going to do the same thing coming off the five. Likes to glue him to the back of this ball. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good. You can do the same thing here. I think you have room, and that's why you, you want to glue him. That's why I gave you the old eh. You do want to glue him to the back of that ball. I feel like Labutis can kick below the 14, two rails in behind the 10. If the speed is on and glue him to the 10, it's trouble for Paggy Lyon. That's what he's looking at. Yes, the 10 does bank below the 14, but if you butter him up to it, wow. So he must have him completely snookered off this bottom rail. It doesn't look like it to me. That's not going to get it. No, that's not going to get it. The 12 and 7 are tied up. The 3 does not go. Paggy Lyon can go all out on this 14. 100% commitment here. Knock this down. You can win the game. He's hit it perfect. And notice, Labutus or Pagulain moved the coin to the center. Labutus didn't get a rail there, but Pagulain owed one. It washes out to speed the tournament up. And Pagulain made the 14 to speed the tournament up. He's looking to run out. little jumpy and the cue ball's a little steep can he go into the 15 and 2 here or does he have to come around does the 11 play doesn't want to get snuckered not thrilled with it, but I think the 11 plays or he wouldn't have gone there. He's going to go into the 9 here.
This is a pretty common shot amongst all rotation and one pocket players. I do not see him missing this ball. He does know he's going into the nine, opening the three up. But he should get position. Probably go into the one, might get a shot on the 13. Well, I thought he'd move the one a little bit more. This is trouble. And he banked the nine. And just pinch back. That's what he's worried about. If you bank the nine and pinch back, if you make the nine, you've trapped yourself. Looking at the eight. The eight's not bad, and he could go forward. Note the 12 and 7. He could just bank the 8 towards his pocket and go forward. A little concerned maybe about the 6, but I don't know. I think that that's okay. Probably a favorite to make the 8. Is he not aware that the 12 and 7 are tied up and that he really doesn't have anything? If he just puts him out there somewhere center table, maybe above the side pockets. Okay, he knew it all along. The young man, very, very sharp. We're all aware of that. Plays backgammon at a very high level. Boy, is he going to stun right there? Boy, I'm shocked he left the three. He felt good about it. Stunning it gave him more accuracy. He could hit it with a little more confirmation. He's got perfect on the five as well. The problem with going forward was he really wasn't going to have for any position so this is great he's playing for three yeah not the end of the world he can remove the three would have liked to have caught the 15 a little thicker to get a shot on the two Doesn't want to hit the 7 or 12 here. Well, he intended to go into the 7 and 12 and move something to his side. Does Pius take a bank at the 6 here? Two railing this ball. Problem with that is that you're going to leave a cross corner of some type if you don't make it. Hit it pretty good from where he was. Pretty impressed. That ball was out in the center of the table, so he has gotten a lot out of it. Can Packy Lyon cross the one and make the 13 at the same time? It's a fun shot to watch. Or does he just want to remove the balls? shot that was. You've got to give him credit. You've got to think that he knew that ball was double kissing over towards his hole. 
That's extra level stuff. So we'll go back to the two railer that Labuda shot on the ball that was out in the middle of the table, which was the 12. Was he a bigger favorite to make that two railer or the straight back on the six? I feel like he was a bigger favorite to make the straight back on the six, especially on these pockets. And he would have had a shot on that ball that's been moved now. Was that his opportunity? And I guess I'm all saying that one pocket player probably isn't going to take that bank on, but he's such a straight shooter that I knew he wanted to be aggressive. But if you're going to be aggressive, at least give yourself the best opportunity to pocket the ball. I felt like the six was a better percentage. I'm going to have to come off the nine here, I think. And just bring him back down here below the 12. Yeah, kicking at a bare ball out in the middle like this. Dangerous, number one. I don't know that there's a future, number two. As he soon realizes. Paggy Lyon starting to expose the weaknesses of the young man from across the pond. playing for two. Playing for one and a two to one lead in game number three. is on layaway. Does the 9 have him doubled up on the blue 2 as well? Might have to cut at the 13 unless he feels comfortable playing the combination. He needs a bit of a miracle here with the positioning of all of these balls. The 6 is out of the kitchen. The 7 is a problem. He needs to get them all. And then follow the 1 in. Looking to come to the six now. I've seen crazier things happen. So I'm not going to count him out yet, but he needs a favorable rub here or a stop. Take a swing at this. <laughs> He's going to have to continue swinging. Another grin from the young man. I tell you what. Oh, yeah, this is much steeper than it looked from the other angle. <laughs> I was beginning to say if he could chop this and end up somewhere out in the center where he is now, he could chop the nine and come around. You know, my imagination tends to run wild. But he's going to chop the nine now and maybe fall on the three. Uh, he's caught it a bit thick, and that's going to cost him game number three. The Lion moves into the lead. But this ball is so deep, I think he's going to make him shoot it. He 
you can't blame him because if he catches it a bit wrong, the cue ball could take a funny bounce somewhere. Oh my goodness. Look at this. And just as I said, that's why he makes him shoot it. Let's take another look at that. Look at how deep the one is. You could argue it went off the point. I don't think so. But anything can happen. It's pool. And that is living on the edge. Well, at least we were entertained. But it's never over until it's over. How would you have liked it if he would have scratched there? Couldn't lose the game if you've tried. And then all of a sudden, those two balls would come up. Pius had a bunch of good things happening. Pagulain all of a sudden would have become a dog in the match, not a favorite. Players are on break. We will be right back. Yeah, so what an exciting end to that game. We have been able to see a little bit of the inexperience from Labunas, but you can also see glimpses of greatness from him, right? We're talking about a young man that doesn't play one pocket. And it just uh, an attribute or a tribute to the abilities of this new generation. And where the game has gone, in my opinion. You know, we all love rotation games. We all love nine ball. We all love ten ball. But this game has become so popular in the States, the fans have become so knowledgeable, right? And now it's bleeding over into other countries. And I really felt and feel like if there was a way to shorten this up or speed this game up a little bit and get the pub public into understanding it even better, that this game could really take off. Do or die here for Lubudis in this match. He has to hold serve on this break. Well, he too has caught the fifth ball and come off the 13, which I also believe was the same ball that Pagaline came off of and in the same pocket as well. So Lubudis is going to start out owing one. You'll notice these players always want to go to this top ball. They'd rather do more than just something with a shot. They're always looking that extra mile. There's options here, though, if you're paying a line. He's weighing them out. He's looking to remove the 11 and 4 and sweep everything to his side just stop right there. He's immediately going to this shot like it's the only shot available. I feel like there's other shots. The only reason I'm a little concerned about this shot is that typically you want to shoot the 11 into the left side of the 4 so that the 11 two rails out and the 4 goes straight over towards your side of the table. I don't know that you can do that due to the positioning of this 4. I'll say that one more time. You want to be able to shoot the 11 into the bottom or back side of the four so that the 11 two rails over to your side and the four one rails to your side. 
any time you have to aim the 11 to the thin side or the left side of the 4 or the top side on our screen, the hit becomes much more difficult. And that is why he's thinking twice about his decision. He may go back to the shot, but it is a lot more difficult to execute. If the four was an inch more to the right, boy, he'd have a real good shot to shoot the 11 between the rail and the four and sweep everything to his side. Here, I believe he's got to catch the right half of the four. Still very doable, but a little bit tougher. Yeah, he's done great with the cue ball. He didn't hit it as hard as I thought, so he shot the ball with a lot more control. A lot of players will slam those, trying to get more motion out of the pile. I like the way he played it. Taking speed off the shot also allows for more accuracy. Very, very great shot there. For a moment, he almost looked at cutting the nine, I think. Till reality set in. Well, he's got issues. The issue is the red and white 11. Can he bank the 13 between the 4 and 8 and go forward? The kiss is close. He's got to catch that ball very heavy. He would love to be able to bank that ball clean and send the cue ball, drift the cue ball down behind the 11. He's got to catch this ball fat so the double kiss is in play. Oh, well. He hit it with speed to avoid the kiss. Got a little lucky there. That ball will come up. Oh, wait a minute. That ball won't come up. That ball went in Paggy Lion's pocket. It even confused me. <laughs> oh, wow. The gravity of that roll is starting to sink in with me. He's in trouble here. Yeah, he's in pretty good trouble here. Hmm. What does he have up his sleeve? Yeah, he's going to elect to possibly take a foul. I wouldn't even fault him to just put him in the top left corner. Versus bring him down here to where you're risking possibly leaving some type of a bank. Yeah, I don't know about this. He's going to cut at the nine. I think you're better off just putting him in the top left corner. Using the left long rail to slow the cue ball down. I teach that shot in my clinic. But wow, this is an opportunity. They're both having a good time, which is great to see. You've got to have fun with this. It's a race to three. Pews. A really good guy. Very lighthearted. Peggy Lyon. Always lighthearted. Always having fun. I 
I think you've just got to all out commit to pocketing the ball here. It's going to probably crash into the edge of the 15. You're going to go into the 12. Let's take a look. That's what's happened. Where is the three going to do? Well, it's laid pretty nicely. I see at least five here that he should get. Eight, three, 15, 12, 11. He's got an opportunity to get all the way out. He does 0-1. Nice, very nice. The further he gets into this run, the more he thinks about the 13. Clearly don't want to, but subconsciously, you know it's there. He's decided to come back for this ball now. I feel like that's a mistake, and I'll tell you why. You can use that ball later as insurance if you get too high on another ball. You can use that as insurance, and not only that, you probably want to use that as your last ball to break out the stack, and you want to stay low on it. Now, he's still at the table. He's got a chance to tie this match up, but I'm just explaining why I think that could potentially be an error. And I think maybe he even realized that after he did it. Does he have a breakout ball? Does the two go? He sure acts like something goes that's in the pile. But to me, unless the 14 goes, it looks like He's kind of drawing dead, which is a poker term. Unless he wants to go into the pile now with the 11, maybe try and crash into the 7, or split the 7 and 1. He's not going to do that. So does the 14 go? Okay, is he looking to go into it? What does he have in mind? Yeah, he was trying to go into the 14. Not terrible. He has six. But if he uses that four last, he could have possibly carried an angle into the stack. A lot of times players will try and get cute with something like that when the ball's hanging. More often than not, it's actually tougher from the pocket if you just roll it in than it is if you try to get cute with it. Because now he's got more room to work with. He's closer to the balls. And I'm speaking about Pagulain being closer to the balls. I don't think it's devastating. Just food for thought. I don't know what Alex has. I'm looking. I think he can at least chop off the edge of the 15 and glue him to the back and one of the one and seven. 
It'll open the five up a little bit. Some left English. He might entertain some type of a kick. Pius playing for two. Okay, he's elected to just open the five slightly. Not trying to do too much. Very smart. I think if he was a little more over towards the corner on the right side, he could have probably played him into the stack, but he was a little too flat. You want to keep it simple here. Just come off the 15 or the 1. You really want to keep him low versus all the way over. He wants to move the 15 due to the position of the 5, 14, and 15. Looks like he's going to come in towards the balls, though. That's what he's done. He's not thrilled with how they ended up. Would have liked the 14 to open up more. But he's cut Pius off from the downside of the table. He's got to be real careful what he wiggles open here. Don't want to leave a dead ball. He's really gambling when you do something like that. A player like Peggy Lyon can find something like the 5 off of the 10. He's definitely looking for the aggressive option. I don't believe the 5 will play. Just pointing out options that he might have had. Rail the one. He is. Oh, he thought it was going to come off real sweet, but it didn't do too bad. This is why it's really dangerous to leave your opponent up on the top end of the table when he needs pretty much all of them. You can take a cut at this seven. It looks free to me. I think it's worth it. Yeah, I think you've got to cut it this seven with center ball. Play to overcut it. Just don't catch the 15. Oh, he's caught it thick. Does the six bank. I'm firing the hole. Yeah. You want the cue ball to get up. If you're Pius there, you're better off letting the cue ball high versus there. Alex is not a big underdog from here. He's going to go forward as well, so he's going to get position. He's going to use the two to keep the cue ball from running away. A little surprised he caught that thick. In your mind, you're playing to overcut that seven because it's so hard to overcut that ball. He's going to go forward here. He's going to get a shot on the one if he makes this at minimum. Well, he stunned the cue ball. A little surprised at that decision. I couldn't tell that he was elevating, and I don't think he did. I think he just stunned it because he thought he might get more action off the object balls. But if he just rolls the cue ball forward there, he's going to get a shot on the one, and he's going to open the balls. Probably not 
as much movement on the object balls. But he's guaranteeing himself a shot. Pretty cute. Pretty cute. not the end of the world for Paggy Lyon, especially if he's covered him on the one. Let's take a look from the side. Yeah, and he has covered him on the one. Very clever shot by Paggy Lyon. At least I believe he's covered him on the one. Might be able to swerve to the top side of it, and it is worth it. The value is there if he can. Just get the one to your side. Note the 5 and 14 are pretty much tied up. But if he can't get to the one at all, he's got his work cut out for him. Very clever shot by Paggy Lyon. Something so simple. This could be bad. Does the 10 bank. It is close from here. It looks like he can sniff it. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely with these pockets a heavy favorite to make this. He's happy. That should tell you something. I've always said, you'll know when you've got Paggy Lyon because he's quiet. When he's laughing and joking, you're probably in trouble. And that's most of the time. Knock it down for Paggy Lyon. He's playing. For five. So he's talking about going for the win and what he's meaning there is should he go up into the five now or take that chance? I don't believe he will. I don't believe he will because if you catch the 14, you're going to come up with nothing really. He's going to the five. It's laying nice. Well, he's back door, got a shot on the two. <laughs> and he's laughing. <laughs> you gotta love it. Yeah, he still has a chance. He can draw one rail, I think. Now, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but I feel like he can draw past the, four, the 15 and nudge the 7 over to his side. Yeah. Oh, he had to catch the 15. He's missed the 2. And notice how serious he got all of a sudden. He did not plan for that. Wow. Look at Paggy Lyon on the left side of your screen. Tormented. The Buddhist playing for two. Caught that pretty thick. There is distance here. These young guns typically don't think about missing this, though. Rolled the ball. Okay, tied it up. We are going to the hill, folks. Do us a favor if you get a chance. Go to YouTube, like and subscribe, Railbirds TV. 
bringing you the best action they can from the Derby City Classic. Hit that notification bell. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. One game for it all, folks. Who do you got? Who do you like? Pagulain scratched the last time he broke. Labutis scratched the last time he broke. Pagulain switching pockets. I do the same thing from time to time. It all depends on how you feel. Well, he's avoided the scratch. I wouldn't say that's a great break, but it's not terrible. Immediately see that he could bank the four towards the lower side and go forward. Do not want to leave a kick on the 11 14. Kick to Alex's hole looks pretty good. You might be better off coming off the 14 and putting him behind the seven. And what a great player will do is try to glue him to the back of the seven. I'm not saying that's the shot, I'm just pointing out options. from the other angle now. Yeah, I believe he's going to elect to do the four ball, but I believe that there's other options. Okay, he could see the ten, and that was better insurance to get closer to the six and seven. Could not tell if he could get to that ball or not, but he has, and he has done well. And all of a sudden, things are serious because we're only into the second round. And the man on the right can win the all-around. So he knows how important this match is. I don't believe he's hit it. I know he tried to, but this will work. Remember, if Labuda scratches, it's a wash. Do you two rail kick behind the seven here? Or do you try and nudge him up behind them coming off the 14? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. immediately went to this ball right away. I thought he wouldn't shoot this. What's he doing? Is he one railing this? Wow. What a hit that was. What a hit that was. Look at the cue ball. That is not easy. If we could get a replay, it would almost be worth it. I know it doesn't look like he did much, but man, the execution was at the highest level there. Labuda's going to look at coming off of the 11. Let's take another look. Look at how close to the rail this ball is. He's got to run that cue ball four and a half feet. And he's done perfect. All right. What a hit that was. You're not out of the woods yet. Labutus has to come off this 11. I think you can really nudge him up behind the 15, but he's not used to that shot. It's there, though. It's okay. But he really, really could have come off the 11, got it a little closer to his pocket, and really got behind the 15. So might have overlooked one there. The other problem is you've left the line real close to your work, meaning I wouldn't be surprised if you took a whack at that 15. Can he 
bank the eight and go through the four and one. I feel like it's too thin. At least to make it, it's too thin. I think he can handle it. I think he's got to. He can't stand it. You've got to make him a favorite. Yeah, that's what I thought. He was going to just put the cue well up there above the eight. Labutus doesn't have much, I don't believe. There is a shot here. If the 13's got the 7 6 doubled up and the 13 doesn't go, Labutus at minimum could play the 8 off the top of the 15, sending the 8 his way. But I don't know if the angle is right. Yeah, it seems to me by his body language that the angle is the other way. Can kick the 15 towards your hole with right English. I'm going to catch the 15 thin. Cue ball will come up behind the 7 and 6. It'll stay to the right side of the table, but it's a shot. What do the 4... That stripe and the three look like, though. I feel like that ball's got to get close to the pocket, at least off the 11. And you could put him right in there behind the one. All right. Yeah, he's got the kiss. He's trickled the eight in off the bottom of the 11. Whoopsie daisy. This is... Could be curtains for the line. I thought the shot was there to play it off the top of that ball, but I didn't know that the angle was right. He did get a bad kiss. Got away with it. Coming down for the six. Oh, boy. Does the seven go? If the seven goes, it really could be curtains. If not, did he not get on the six? Could be a huge mistake if he can't make the six. It looks to me like he can make it. But his body language is telling me no. Okay, he's just looking at position. Does the seven go first? I guess it really doesn't matter if he can make the six. He should be able to get on the seven. Oh, wow. To add insult to injury. I don't think you want to flirt with going into the stack just yet come up above the 11 take the 14 next and play the game that's what he's tried to do did it get there I don't think so that is an error that is an error He had a lot of table to work with there to come up short. Uh, 
Aguiline is in offensive mode. You can feel it. He just needs a look at anything. Looking at the four, stripe, three, eleven. The four, twelve, three, eleven. Is it on for the win? Oh, it is on, and he's fallen on position. This will be an upset if he can get these next three balls. And you kind of feel like, I'll take another look. Yeah, and he's played to throw the three towards the 11. It wasn't exactly on, but it was close. Kind of feel like Paggy Lyon kind of got a little comfortable there. It's easy to take somebody for granted. He knows better, and I'm not saying he did. But it all started when he ended up trying to open the five up. When I said he wouldn't do that, he had guaranteed position to get himself needing one. And instead, he went for the run out. And now, Labutus about to advance in round three and send the lion back to the den. Congratulations to Pius Labutus. Thank you all for tuning in. My quote for the day is, you'll never do a whole lot unless you're brave enough to try. So get out there and face adversity. Thank you all for tuning in. Until next time.